newshub.co.nz, coronavirus, all New Zealand's confirmed COVID-19 cases to be put in quarantine facilities from now on. Wow. Now, at first you go, that can't be right. There's got this has got to be some kind of sensationalist headline. No. Quarantine facilities does not mean your home. All confirmed cases of COVID-19 in New Zealand will be p- placed in quarantine facilities from now on. Director General of Health Dr. Ashley Bloomfield announced the change at a press conference on Thursday moments after revealing that there are 13 new cases of coronavirus linked to an outbreak in South Auckland. The use of quarantine facilities marks a major departure from how positive cases were managed by health officials when New Zealand was last at level three as cases earlier in the year were told to simply self-isolate in their home. And now, <laughs> told, mm, yeah, more like forced and threatened and bullied into doing that. But just before we before we get carried away with the implications of this, if you think, Adam, you know, this couldn't happen in America. We've never had concentration camps in America. Oh, whoops. Oh, yeah, we did. We called them internment camps. Japanese, World War II, pretty fucked up and brutal. But if you think, well, Adam, yeah, Germany, okay, America, we had our own little version of that here during World War II. It was a crazy time. We were the only ones doing it. Mm, No. And right away I go, Britain, Boer Wars, uh, Argentina, Australia, Austria, Hungary, Hungary, uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, uh, Cambodia, Canada, Channel Islands, Chile, China. Croatia, Cuba, Denmark, Finland, France, Germany, Hong Kong, India, Ireland. Isle, by the way, that was India under British rule. Isle of Man, Italy, Japan, uh, Korea, Republic of Libya, Montenegro, Netherlands, New Zealand, Norway, Korea, Ottoman Empire, Turkey, Paraguay, Poland, Russia, Serbia, Slovakia, South Africa, Spain, Sri Lanka, Sweden, Switzerland, United Kingdom, including Bermuda, Cyprus, England, Ireland, Free 819. 22, Kenya, Malaya, North Ireland, Scotland, South Africa, USSR, Wales, USA, for the indigenous people in the Philippines, for German Americans during World War I, Japanese, German, Italian Americans, and Native Alaskans during World War II, political dissidents, Vietnam War, Afghan War, and the occupation of Iraq, migrants at the Mexico-U.S. border, South and North Vietnam, Yugoslavia, Nazi camps, uh, and then there's a C also section. There are 43 nations listed on the Wikipedia page called List of Concentration and Internment Camps. Now, let's go to New Zealand's crazy neighbor, Australia. Another Wikipedia page here, if you would please, CJ. No jab, no pay is an Australian policy initiative which withholds three state payments, child care benefit, the child care rebate, and as of 2018, the family tax Benefit Part A, end of year supplement for parents of children under 20 years of age who are not fully immunized or on a recognized catch up schedule and imposes fines on child care centers that admit unvaccinated children. You're not going to be forced to get the vaccine, but if you don't, you will be forced back into your home in self isolation as a pariah to wither and die hopefully on the scraps of welfare given to you by others, unless you're in a situation like mine where you live off-grid down three miles of private dirt road and can just declare your sovereignty and say, screw all that. But the thing is, no jab, no pay. Maybe I won't get my VA benefits. Maybe I won't have access to the American banking system. And I'll be okay with Bitcoin if it comes to that. But not the rest of America. This is how they're going to bully you into this. If you go, oh, Adam, this is 2018. No, 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 no. The Australia prime minister just said he thinks vaccines should be mandatory. And in a lot of places in the United States, in the emergency declaration orders, governors have expressed that they have the same authority. Never say it couldn't happen here. Revising history is critical because the whitewashing of history gives us a false impression of the present. And when the victors write the history, 
it means that the victors can continue to use that false narrative to further exploit us if we don't challenge it.